from the time of the Roman gladiators chucking spears from speeding chariots. Sports has always served as the perfect elixir for breaking barriers and building bonds. From a random celebratory high five between complete strangers to President Mandela's revolutionary 1995 alliance with the Springbok rugby team in the fight against apartheid, the influence of sports on our culture has evolved from one of sheer brawn to purveyor of life lessons. Good morning, everybody. My name is Gavin Morton, and this is my lovely wife. Sue Morton. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. And good night. <laughs> I'm sure that many of you, like us, have participated in sports and still enjoy peripheral benefits such as discipline and fortitude. As many of you know, the influence on many business decisions involving leadership and teams can still be traced to the leader's past athletic experiences. That's right, honey. Indeed, the model for success in business and in sports is the same. The more the team strategically shares, the more productive they are, and consequently, the higher the likelihood they'll rise to the top. The most compelling modern day demonstration of the power and the reach of sports is the FIFA World Cup soccer tournament. From children all over the world playing soccer in pavement, on pavement in countries like Nigeria, to many of us U.S. soccer moms scurrying across the pavement in our fully loaded minivans, soccer has garnered global attention and gathered fans from around the world. If it is not already obvious, soccer rules the day in the Morton household. <laughs> I was so proud the day my youngest son, Sam, following in his older brother's footsteps, took an interest in soccer. Uh, I think you need to tell everyone how you really felt about that. Yes, honey. So, being from Canada, I grew up playing oh. hockey. Yeah. Yes, thank you. <laughs> and I, I kind of hoped Sam would follow suit. But Sue had other ideas, and I'd hoped that he would keep all of his teeth. Yeah. So, we bought soccer cleats instead of hockey skates. <laughs> Whether or not Sam excelled at soccer was truly secondary. I knew that the peripheral benefits that he would gain would stick with him for the rest of his life. What I didn't know was that soccer would bring my family, one of my family's biggest decisions, to our doorstep. I'm sure that many of you have had the privilege of being a parent or shoulder the responsibility of being a caretaker. You can fully appreciate the fact that Gavin and I feel the sun rises and sets on our children. At the time of our life-changing event, our oldest child, Heidi, was 23, living in Athens, Georgia, and just three weeks from her wedding. Our middle child, Patrick, was 22, working in San Francisco. And our youngest child, Sam, was 15, living at home. So in parent language, that means two down. And one to go. <laughs> in all seriousness, we were not counting down the days becoming empty nesters, but it was definitely on our radar. We had no plans on extending our family, but that all changed in October of 2013, and I'll let Sue take us back. Well, life was humming along normally for us, and I was doing my motherly duties, driving Sam back and forth to soccer practice. On cold and dark evenings, I'd often sit in the car. Sometimes I'd talk with some of the other parents. Well, one evening, I was talking to the team mom, and she told me about Patrick, one of Sam's teammates. He was in a dire situation. It turns out that Patrick had no parents no family and no place to call home. His only refuge was the 90 minutes that he spent each evening on the soccer field. And then I later learned that Patrick had an older brother, Daniel. So not only was one child suffering, there were two. 
My heart ached each evening that I watched Patrick walk off the soccer field, not knowing if he would have a meal to eat or a bed to sleep in was emotionally overwhelming. These young boys have already lived in three countries and moved a total of at least eight times. I got you that. <laughs> Each move for the boys was high on uncertainty and low on love. In fact, in one case, the living conditions were deplorable. For reasons bigger than myself, I felt that we had to help these boys, no matter what. I knew in my heart that somehow they were meant to be connected to our family. And I'll never forget looking into Gavin's eyes and saying, we have to help, and we can help this much or this much, but we have to help. We decided that our first course of action was to make Sam aware of uh, Patrick and his older brother's situation. When Sa as soon as Sam became aware of the circumstances, he immediately asked if we could invite Patrick and Daniel to live in our home. As parents, we were not surprised but overjoyed at our son's sense of compassion. Knowing Sam to be a great judge of character, we fully trusted his instincts. And as a leader in business or in life, a leader who fully trusts those he trains is very important. Now, a decision like this would normally take, would normally take me months to make. You know, I dot every I and cross every T. I can't help it. I'm a logical thinker, and I'm an HR guy. Of course, I considered the safety of our family and the financial consequences of bringing the boys in. But surprisingly, my emotions took over, and I was compelled to lead with my heart instead of my head. Now, as business people, we understand that leadership happens on many different levels and can come from many places. But none are more important than the head and the heart. I have to admit, the decision came a little bit easier than I expected. I had a lot of help from Sue and Sam. Sam flat out said, I've made up my mind we're doing this. <laughs> and Sue, a little surprised I was able to reach a decision so quickly, rushed to close the deal as if the tranquilizer dart was about to wear off. <laughs> our next move was to call our older kids, Heidi and Patrick, to get their buy-in. They asked a couple of questions, but then they quickly gave us their blessing. Next, we reached out to Anthony, the soccer parent that had been driving Patrick back and forth to soccer practice. We told Anthony that we wanted to open up our home and our hearts to Daniel and Patrick. So Anthony agreed to pass a message along to the boys. Now at this point, we, we were committed. committed. One night shortly after soccer practice, on November 6th, 2013, one short week after Sue became aware of the boys' circumstances, we met Patrick and Daniel for the first time. We told the boys we understood they needed some help. We packed up their belongings contained in a cardboard box and two garbage bags into the car, and off we went. We turned to Patrick and Daniel and said, boys, we understand that you need a permanent solution. So let's all hope that in six months' time, we all think this was a good decision. <laughs> the boys really didn't say much. I think they were pretty overwhelmed. Well, I am happy to report that that moment positively changed our lives forever. And I would like to introduce you to the young man who brought us all together, our son, our hero, Sam. Hmm. <laughs> Weeks before we extended our family, you could have told me that this would have happened and I would have said, no way. For me, the decision to bring Patrick and Daniel into our home was a no-brainer. And the fact that I didn't have to pay for it made it that much sweeter. <laughs> Thanks, Mom and Dad. Seriously, it was a gut feeling, one of those things you just know. What type of person diligently practices a sport day in and day out, knowing that they have a 0% chance of playing in the game. Think about this. Patrick couldn't play because of his 
legal status. Solely his legal status. One game, I had the privilege of sitting next to him on the bench for 90 minutes watching our team play. The hunger in his eyes, his desire to make a contribution to our team, despite his personal situation, told me everything I needed to know about him. I remember thinking to myself, man, this guy really deserves a break. When the opportunity came, I took it. I believe that when you're fortunate, you should share it with others. Like Dad said, it was one of the best decisions I ever made. Now, I expected growing pains adjusting to life with my new brothers, but what I didn't expect was an even deeper appreciation for my parents and my two new best friends. I love these guys. Mom and Dad called them Patrick and Daniel. I call them Pato and Iffy. Boys, come on out. Oh, I know. Oh. <laughs> our plan was simple. Welcome the boys into our home, enroll them in school, and then start to pursue their present permanent residency. So we hit a few bumps along the way, but when it came to pursuing their residency, we needed a miracle. When we met with a wonderful child advocate attorney on December the 3rd, we quickly realized that we were on a very short time frame. Daniel's 18th birthday was January the 10th, just over one month away. So to avoid possible deportation, we needed to have the necessary documentation and a court appearance before a judge in just over one month's time. We need a miracle. <laughs> yes, we really did need a miracle. <laughs> and if you've ever dealt with the immigration system, as I have, and many of you in HR have, you know nothing happens quickly. It is, it's all uphill. However, at the 11th hour, the universe began to conspire on our behalf, as if telling us that we had made the right decision. The exact people that we needed to navigate us quickly and successfully through the immigration process began to appear. And not only that, they graciously handled all of our legal proceedings pro bono. On January the 9th of 2014, one day before Daniel's 18th birthday, we stood before a judge in Gwinnett County, Georgia, <laughs> who gave us legal guardianship and the documentation that we needed to, pr pr to pursue the boy's permanent resident status. We really celebrated Daniel's birthday the next day. <laughs> in business and in life, we understand that leadership happens on many levels and can come from many places. Without the support and leadership of family, friends, attorneys, social workers, soccer coaches, and even complete strangers, navigating this process would have been impossible. We are living proof that it still takes a village. Now, before we close, um, I'd like to introduce you to some of our village, the rest of our family. Please welcome Heidi and Patrick Gordon and Patrick Morton. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> hey, big guy. Now, uh, I, if we've confused you, I'm sorry, but if you've been keeping track uh, and counting, yes, we now have three Patricks in the family. <laughs> Since November of 2013, we have lived each day as a family, laughing, crying, just a little, teasing, debating, all while respecting each other's differences but working towards common goals. We are truly grateful to Daniel and to Patrick for giving our family the opportunity to lead and experience life on a higher level. Despite the negative images we see around us in the world today, what we have learned from this experience is that the spirit of kindness is not only alive, but it's kicking, <laughs> like soccer. 
after spending 25 plus years in human resources and experiencing leadership in its many forms, this expression of leadership has impacted me the most. What we have learned is that if you lead with your heart, you should expect to break down barriers and build bonds in business, but more importantly, in life. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. That was really good. Of course.